Specjalnym gościem Polskiej Szkoły Trenerów i kanału Łączy Nas Piłka jest selekcjoner reprezentacji Islandii Lars Lagerberg. Hello coach. Hello. You've got quite good memories as a coach from Poland, haven't you? Yeah, we've been lucky when I was with Sweden when we played Poland. We, we succeeded to win, I think, both, both at home and away. So in that way I have uh, positive memories from Poland. Yes, but let's focus on Iceland. When you took over as uh, Iceland coach in uh, 2010, uh, they were ranked lower than Liechtenstein. So uh, now you are in the top 30 and probably everyone is uh, wondering uh, how does it happen. So what's the secret of the, this success? I don't think it's any secrets, but uh, I mean, first of all, you need a group of players that are, are good enough. And uh, we have a group of players now that I think is, is rather good. They're playing in good leagues. They played in the youth national teams, got a lot of international experience from that. Uh, also, they have a very, very good attitude. I really like working with them. With them. It's very easy. Uh, always want to do their best, and, and both in training and in matches. And, and of course now we've been working together for three years, so uh, the more time you get with the national team, I think they, they understand better and better the way I want them to play and, and things like that. So uh, it's, a, it's a combination of, of these things, I think. Yes, we heard also a lot of positives about uh, their mentality, their attitude. For example, Henning Berg, who is working now in uh, Legia Warsaw, said that, uh, I will quote it, uh, the mental attitude uh, is the first thing you notice in Icelandic players. They are always giving their best effort, they work hard in training and they are mentally strong. They yeah, definitely. I think it's a really good way of describing the players. They, they are really proud of their country, they want to come home also, so they are always easy to motivate and things like that. So, and I think it's about the society, you know, a, a small island out in the middle of the Atlantic. They, they get used from, from, they are very, very young to take care of themselves and things like that. That's, I think it's typical for the society in general. Uh -huh. And to what first uh, attracted you to take this job? Maybe this uh, generation from under 21 team? Yeah, exactly. When, when they asked me and I start looking into the squad and what kind of players they had, I didn't know them that well at that time. Uh, it looks very interesting. And for me, being old also now, but, but general for me, if, if I think it should be interesting from, from a football point of view. You don't need to have the best team, but, but it looks interesting and I thought they were, have possibilities to become rather good. So, what is your, in your opinion, the main factor of this huge development of Icelandic football, maybe the infrastructure? Yeah, of course, that has been better too. I mean, they, everybody talks about it and, and I agree with it that they, today they have five, seven uh, full-size indoor halls. More than Sweden? More than Sweden, much more. So they can play and train football all around the year. And also the, the good thing with these big indoor halls is if it's not a club or a school there, it's open so, so children and, and young players can go there by themselves if you like during the winter time to, to play. So I think that's also an explanation, even if not so much for this national team because most of these players went away when they were maybe 16, 17, 18 years abroad. But uh, in the big picture, I think it has meant a lot for, for the development of Icelandic football, also for coaching education, because now they can work with, with the coaching education inside these big, big uh, indoor halls also. So that's a benefit too, I think. Yes, and uh, let's back for a moment uh, to their mentality, because uh, in one interview you gave ex an example of um, traveling and uh, for example they were traveling to Cyprus and yeah. uh, they stopped in London for uh, six hours and they were not complaining about it. Yes? Now it's fantastic. I mean we had a home game against Norway and we started five o'clock from the hotel the next morning and we ended up in Cyprus. It was a time difference of course but I think we arrived around one o'clock, stopped six hours in London, had to change airports and uh, no one was complaining so that was absolutely fantastic experience for me. So I guess that this change from Nigeria uh, job to Iceland was like a journey from different two poles, yes? Yeah, you could say that, especially outside the pitch. Uh, I mean, it, it was different the way you, you handle your leadership because they are very religious, the players, for instance, and things like that. But from the football part, they were very professional, but everything else around the team and a lot of people involved and everybody was a little bit suspicious about uh, what does he get from that and things like that. So, so it was a totally different uh, culture. So I learned a lot and I really got a lot of respect for, for Nigeria in, in many ways. And 
course I get some friends there also now, so it was really learning for me too to be there. Yeah, for example, Oscar Tabarez, uh, current head coach of Uruguay team, said that he is not coaching stars, he is coaching uh, people. But when you are working with uh, players with strong, uh, big personalities, uh, you must have a special attitude for them. Do you agree with it or no? Yeah. Like Zlatan, like Van for example? Yeah, in a way. I think the older you get as a coach, you realize that, that maybe you can't uh, handle everybody exactly the same. But I think it, what is most important is to value people and respect people but I mean you can't give a lot of benefits to a player because he's a big star I don't believe in that so he have to accept the the way we are working living playing and things like that but then of course you have to listen I mean you have one thing from the football part these biggest players I have coached they play a lot of matches because they are in big clubs playing in the Champions League a lot of matches and things like that so you have to adapt to that too I think but uh, Mainly, I think you should try to, to handle them as close as possible to all the others. Yes, but you like to work uh, with players like Zlatan, for example? Yeah, I like that very much because, I mean, he was a fantastic player. I, I mean, I saw him the first time, I think, when he was 17 or something, when he played in his club. And then when we started to get him into the national team, he was a very individual player. But then he has matured and developed both as a human being and and as a footballer during my years with him. So, so, I mean, you learn a lot from that too, because the better players you have, the more you can think about the way you want the team to play and how shall you use a big, really good individual player like he, for instance. So uh, it, it's interesting from many points of view. And are you obsessive as a coach, for example, like uh, Bielsa, or uh, you're more like Harry Redknapp? Yeah, I, I don't think I'd like any one of them. I, I think I, I always try to be myself and, and I think the older I got and, and uh, as a coach and you get more experience, I think I'm pretty calm and, and uh, try to analyze as good as possible both what you're doing in training and in matches. I mean, if I get a lot of feelings into it, uh, I, don't, I think I don't uh, is as good coach as I could be. Mm -hmm. And to what is interesting from our point of view, Icelandic players are uh, smart not only on the pitch but also uh, outside the pitch, like uh, Hannes Haldagsson, the goalkeeper, who is uh, also a movie maker, he's directing an advertisement. It's not so common thing in the football world. No, I mean, still you have most of the players on Iceland are semi professional, so that's a difference too. But you have a lot of players there that I met. I mean, we have another guy in, a, in the really good player in the national team that is studying the same time he is, is playing on a high professional level. So they, they, many of them are really, really ambitious in many ways. Mm -hmm. And do you enjoy Iceland as a country? Very much. It's, it's a very different country in many ways, but, but if you look upon the nature, of course, but also the society, I think I always say that it's a little bit like when I was young in Sweden, it's, it's, uh, everybody is taking a lot of responsibility, I think, and, and uh, as I said about the players, I think they, they're used to taking care of themselves uh, a lot more than in many other European countries they I, ha I have experienced. Yes, but uh, we cannot find there many entertainments, for example. So what is the best way to spend, for example, long uh, Icelandic uh, evenings in Reykjavik? Yeah, I, you can do, I think, about the same as you can do in Warsaw or if you, you can do in Stockholm. I mean, they have good restaurants, they have a fantastic uh, opera house, uh, concert hall. So, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's like a big city today in, in uh, Reykjavik, even if it's not that many people. So, I don't miss anything when, I, when I'm in uh, Iceland. So, whatever you're interested in, yeah, I think you can do it in Reykjavik too. Except maybe sunbathing in the summer, the climate in the summer is, isn't the best. <laughs> okay, and to what's your next uh, goal uh, for the future? as a coach of this team? I'm not thinking longer than this contract now with Iceland. I mean, I'm getting older and older, so uh, if I'm clever enough, I probably should retire. But I, at the same time, I say to people that ask me that I don't close any doors. But uh, for the next years, it's Iceland now. So hopefully I will be there in 2016 in France too, if, if we can do it well, the rest of the qualification. And after that, I really don't know what will happen. Okay. and. Uh, Iceland uh, has become famous because of uh, music, because of Halgrim uh, or and books, and now they become uh, also famous because of football and it's uh, your contribution. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm a part of it, of course, but it's a lot of people. I mean, the, I, I, I always say that being a head coach is not a one-man job. You have a staff that is really important. You need the players and everything like that. So, so it's always a teamwork. But of course, as a coach, you have the responsibility to organize everything and, and try to, to put in the right things in, into the football for the national team. So, of course, the coach play a, a part of it. Okay, coach. Thank you very much for the interview. It was a big honor to, to host you here and good luck in the Euro 2016 qualifiers. Thanks a lot for that. We probably need it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice being here. Thanks very much. Thank you.